Hey guys, my name is Julia and I'm one of your teen services librarians over at the main library on Goodwood. We are back with Tim shenanigans and we're making water wheels this week. Supplies that accompany this week's video are available at the main library's drive through in a limited capacity. To make a water wheel, you will need plastic spoons, styrofoam, chopsticks, duct tape, 3D printed gears, and rubber bands. Our first step to get started is we're going to take our styrofoam and insert the spoons into it. These will be our paddles. You will definitely need to cut your styrofoam beforehand. I did not cut it for you because I want you to be able to choose where you put your, uh, your paddles. An important thing to keep in mind here is that we want all of our spoons to face the same way. If you have them facing opposite directions, it will really uh, screw up the efficiency of your machine. Once you have that, our next step is to go ahead, take on one of our chopsticks and stick it through the center of our wheel. This helps if you uh, pre-stick something through here. Again, I wanted you to be able to do this, so it's up to you. Once that's on there, you decide where it's going to be. You want to go ahead and tape it down. Once you've uh, taped the wheel in place so it's not going to go sliding every which way, you want to put another layer of tape right around the edge of your chopstick right there. We're doing this to fit our gear a little bit snugger on here. So it's still a little bit loose. I'll have another go at it. All right, and that fits on there quite snug now. So what you wanna do after that is just tape down to the end of the gear. Make sure that you've got it on there so it won't slide. All right, and now that we've got everything taped on, let's go and test this out. All right, so we are here and we are testing our water wheel in the most cobbled up system of all time. We had the water wheel with its axle resting on two styrofoam cups, uh, was resting on top of two coffee mugs, resting on top of a microwave plate and a sink that it is too small for. And because it is too small, the too big for this bugger. We are gonna test out the water wheel in the most cobbled up system I ever did make. We have uh, our water wheel contraption with the axle resting on two styrofoam cups on top of two coffee mugs on top of a microwave plate and a sink that is entirely too small for this project. Because the wheel is bigger than the sink, we are gonna do a little bit of water diverting. There's definitely areas where I can make improvements and you can make improvements in yours as well. Probably at this time you're wondering uh, why on earth I gave you the other things I did, the other gear, the chopsticks, the rubber bands. Well, this is engineering. You figure out what you wanna do with your wheel and you design it how you want. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, so now it's time for the science. A water wheel is just a machine that transforms the kinetic energy of flowing water into rotational energy that you can use to power other machines. They have been used since ancient Greece, and they made pretty much all of the early industrial revolution possible. So let's talk about efficiency real quick. Efficiency is just how much input you put into a machine that can become output. The output is never going to be greater than or equal to the input, but you want them to be as close together as you possibly can. There's four basic types of water wheels. There is the vertical axis, which is where the wheel is on its side and water is shot at it to turn it that way. The Vikings were very fond of this design, but it is frankly a terrible and inefficient design. Uh, you then have the undershot wheel, and this is where water will flow underneath the wheel. This, is, depending on the type of water you put it in, you can get anywhere from 20 to 60% efficiency on it. There's then the breast shot wheel, and this is where a wheel is placed where there's a drop in elevation. So the water will hit about mid-level, drop down, and turn the wheel that way. These usually are about 50% efficient. And finally, you have the uh, overshot wheel, and this is where water comes in from the top and is dumped onto the wheel to turn it. These can get up to 90% efficiency. The way you calculate power for a water wheel is power equals head times density of water times rate of flow times gravity times efficiency. It sounds like there's a whole lot going on there, but it's all just multiplication. So increase one thing, power goes up. Increase or decrease anything, and the power goes down. 
and you don't get a say about the density of water or gravity's rate, but you do get to choose the head of the water, so how far your water has to drop, the rate of flow, how much water your paddles can hold, and uh, how efficient your machine is. If you have any questions or comments, holler at us. Leave a comment here or call us at 231-3770. Better yet, show us what you made by tagging us on Instagram. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed testing out your engineering skills and I can't wait to see you next week.